Okay, I'm going to show you how to do the same thing as I did a second ago using some basic 3D commands, uh, 2D basically, and then Revolve. I can't call it 3D, but as we look at SketchUp and Inventor and a couple others, we're going to talk about how we kind of do things like Revolve. I'm going to do this again, drafting from the side. I'm going to first draft the whole piece. Right click, and any tool brings up, set of, brings up a set of toolbars. And turn on the View toolbar, turn on the Layers toolbar. We might have shake all our, make sure all of our layers are on, thaw, and turn everything on when you're troubleshooting. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that. I'm going to draft the full thing that I did before on the correct layer, and then we're going to talk about the idea of revolve, extrude, and sweep, and a couple other things. We're just going to do a revolve here. I'm going to draft that general piece that I just did before, drafting the whole thing at 2, comma, 3. And I got that here. Turn to my center line layer, and we're going to start learning how to draft the half section. So I've done that already, at least with one student. I think I got to turn my keyboard on. Once again, Bluetooth, the wonders of Bluetooth. The wonders of Bluetooth. I'll do a line here, waiting for the line to come along. Line from the mid. Shift right click. Doesn't like that. Doesn't like no my keyboard here. E window. L, shift right click from the midpoint there, shift right click to the midpoint there. Now we're going to draft the half section, and I just drew, I drafted it arbitrary. I'm just going to offset and put in a half, uh, a, a, offset a quarter inch there, so a quarter, offsetting a quarter right there. I'm going to draft the half section and do a revolve. So what I'm going to do now is trim out. Remember, I drafted that whole thing. Even though I could explode, I'm going to go ahead and, yes, of course, I'm going to p-edit. First step to p-edit, yes. P-edit, J for join. You see it's going to add that to it. And I'm going to make a region. Region. Someone asked about regions. And it's going to put my region on whatever layer I'm drafting on. So I want to make sure I put this thing on the right layer. And now I'm going to show you the concept of revolve. Revolve is where the formula pi r squared comes from. You don't have to see it. And later on, you'll see exactly why you don't have to see it. When I do this revolve, I'm going to go ahead and make a layer. I'm calling it, of course, something new. And I'm going to go... Not 3D, though. It is 3D, but I'm just going to put not 3D there. I'm going to double click. That's going to be my current layer. I'm going to make that a color we haven't used before so you can see it when it happens. Not 3D. Because we're going to look at getting 2D projections out of this. I'm going to use the command revolve. The commands that go from 2D into 3D are revolve, extrude, sweep, union, subtract, intersect, things like that. There are many are called Boolean operations. Revolve, I'm going to select the object there. I'm going to say object, but I really like you to say object. Works for me. Grab that object for going around. And then I want to revolve 360 degrees. Now what you see is it went ahead and did it, and it put it on that layer, not 3D. Right now, I'm going to turn off all my other layers, even though I wouldn't necessarily accept eventually for that view layer, because I do want you to think about the concept of views at this point. So my justification for going through this is to show you how important views are and to show you what cool stuff we got. Remember make about that making a box bigger than the thing you want? Well, sometimes you want to start thinking about this box. And this box was going to be 2 by 3. So I'm just going to go ahead and make a box on the view layer, right click on any toolbar, brings up a set of toolbars. My view layer there, I'm going to go ahead and put this on the view layer, even though later on you won't need to, right? Put my current layer is going to be the view layer. When I did that, I turned the view layer off, so I'm going to turn it back on. Set that to be my layer, and I'm going to draft my little view box. Remember that box? I click down here. I'm going to say at 5 comma 5. Works for me. Minus V for view. Shift right click from the endpoint there. Window, I'm sorry. We're going to call this mark front. You're going to see later on it's going to give you these 
some different things. So we want to get good at not just calling things front, top, and side. First corner is going to be endpoint there. Second corner is going to be endpoint there. I have a view that's looking down onto there, which means I can now go over the paper, which I did not start correctly. So remember, anytime someone gives you right and when you get into something like this you're gonna have to realize oh I probably had something on the viewport layer that maybe was something I might want to get rid of and so that viewport there I'm gonna erase that I'm gonna do M view make a view instead of making it 5 by 5 this time I'm gonna make mine at 2.5 comma 2.5 click over here V for view Mark front, set current, OK. Click on that, and you see once again that view comes up the way you want it. All right, now I'm going to introduce you to the concepts of Sol View and Sol Draw because we've looked at these different views. I apologize if the, the coloring doesn't do it for you, but we'll go through this. SOL View. What I'm going to do is I'm going to grab and say I want an orthographic view. Remember, that's a 3D thing. Side port of the, I'm going to pick the side go up there that gives me the center don't like the fact that it jumped from there and then I'm gonna grab the end from here to here and I vary what sometimes I'll just say again 2.5 comma 2.5 don't need to do that and you've got something there give it a name mark top we're gonna try this again SOL VI view O for ortho side of the, 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 the viewport to project that go out to here it really wants to go out there we don't do it we click I'm gonna click here at 2.5 comma 2.5 and we're gonna call that mark side so you've done solve view here's a trick that not many of you are gonna realize you can get rid of the first viewport and say SOL view again Pick the other viewport, O for ortho, grab the side, go to where you kind of want to be, hit a return, and then show your two viewports. This time it might not be the same. Mark front again. Now you can do something that's huge, which is SOL draw. So I'll draw, pick this object, pick this object, and pick this object. And what you'll see is it's gone and drawn the 2D projections of your 3D thing. The commands are sol view, sol draw. And what did it do in the end? I'm going to finally show you the 3D viewpoint 1, 1, 1. I'm going to turn on shade. Now that sense of this 3D part, remember we started to worry about layering? It's done a lot of different layers attached to the names that you want. But the 3D layer that we had which was not 3D, we wouldn't do that of course. Hit that, click on this here, and you see what it's done, it's projected the lines out. So as we're learning to do these hand projection, I wanted to show you that in the end, much of this is how it comes rolled out in AutoCAD and um, SketchUp and some other engines. But here you kind of generally have piece space, and in the end you can finally turn this, this, and this, Make sure they're on the layer. It's either on the viewports layer. You can change the viewports layer to something else so you don't see the edges of it. You can go ahead and I don't know what happens if I do this. Take that viewports it and put it on a viewports layer automatically. And I'm going to go ahead and just turn that one off and see what, what happens so that you lose the edges of that and your line, your projection lines come through. So that's a real quick through just to kind of show you how that happens generally uh, when you start using some of the other tools. What we're going to be looking here at the concept of hidden lines, um, object lines, center lines, projections, projection lines, that concept of a fold lines from the view box. So that's the second video. Hopefully I can send these two out and we'll start learning to play around with these concurrent at the same time. This is especially for those who've already learned to do projections in another class. Thanks for listening.